that is actually dreaming. And this is real free street talk. I want to sit down and get something straight with y'all today. And I want y'all to hear this real careful. If you keep a diary and you write down all these murders, you write down all this dope selling you've been doing, when the feds catch up to you, it's nothing more than a ledger that's going to convict you. Look at that famous tape by the Chambers brothers. When they was on tape, counting out all the money in laundry bags, and they said, we want to be like Eddie Jackson's crew. Understand what they said, but they kept a ledger of it. They kept a videotape saying they'd take all their dollars and give them to the Pope. All of this played for the jury at his trial. Understand this. A brother keep calling me, telling me about a timeline. Let me explain something to that brother, what a timeline will get him. Life in penitentiary, brother. Your only defense is that the timeline ain't on. Fool. Don't ever let another nigga tell you something when you fucking with a master, brother. A timeline will kill you. And don't you ever forget that. Your only defense is that your story is true. Timeline, don't do it. Because it ain't going to do nothing but sink you. Every story I tell y'all is true. But I ain't never kept no diary. I ain't never wrote all this shit down for the feds to find. Never. Never do I timeline anything. Because the timeline will kill you. The stories I tell you are true. Just like this one I'm finna tell you now. But I can't timeline it and I won't timeline it. That's why. I got sense. Can't nobody make a fool out of me. You niggas in the street was not able to make a fool out of me when I was in the street. And you niggas in the street now won't make a fool out of me. Find another fool. And as Bernie Mac say, you all are the sucker, motherfucker, sucker. Now let me tell you the day story for all you niggas wanting a timeline. Timeline it and see what the feds do to you. Timeline murders and see what you get. So a timeline is going to kill you. A diary wrote down all this shit you. And first of all, who does that? Let me ask all of you viewers now. Do you keep a diary on everything you did every day? But don't you remember it? Don't you remember a lot of things that you did that you do not keep a diary for? What idiot would keep a diary of all illegal crimes? Are you an idiot? Would you wake up and smell the coffee? Now let me tell you today's story. He asked me to watch his back. He went on Seven Mile looking for the brown boys. And he had not found the brown boys over on Seven Mile. Two of them. They were sitting in a car. And D took care of business. Wizard Brown got killed that day. Understand that Wizard Brown got killed that day on Seven Mile. I ain't never in my life asked the name of any of the Brown brothers, whether it was Boogaloo, Rockin' Ridge, or Wizard. I have never asked the name. I have never asked that man any questions about any murders he did. Understand that, because if you asking questions about a murder, let me educate y'all on something. Eddie Jackson and Black Butch them used to be so heavy surveillance and bug and tape. If you sitting around, uh, I killed Boogaloo today. Nigga, you got life in penitentiary. You never talk about that. You know about it, but you don't talk about it. I was a fly on the wall. This is what I'm trying to explain to you all out there. One of my viewers going to say, <clears throat> you better be careful telling these stories. Listen to every story I have ever told you. One I have seen nothing, I have heard things, but I ain't never seen Demetrius pull the trigger and kill nobody. Understand 
that. Realize the truth in this. And don't be a fool for nobody trying to gain fame. If they want to tell their story, let them come out in timeline and tell about these murders, when they happen, where they happen. Then wait for the police to come pick you up. Timeline in this shit. This is real, true street crime, Eddie Jackson Jr. You can only get this here. Real, true street crime. The stories I tell you, you try to timeline them. Go on Google and Instagram. You might find the story I just told you. Wrote on Google and Instagram. Google, I'm sorry, not Instagram. So, just like Demetrius Holloway, Googling. A lot of shit you Google and you see. Understand that. You don't want to give any information that the police don't know that only the killer could know. So if you a smart man, you tell what happened, just like what happened on Tyrant when he killed my man in the driveway and he almost got killed. I don't know who he was. I really don't even know where we was. And at times, my memory goes all the way goddamn out. I can't remember shit sometimes. Then, sometimes it'll come back to me. Understand that. I'm not a timeliner. Uh-uh, you ain't gonna get that out of me. If you want a timeline, let me give you a little advice. Go somewhere else. It'll be appreciated. If you feel you need a timeline, I'm going to give you some good advice. Go somewhere else. It's all right with me. If you feel you have to give a thumbs down and I appreciate you, if you really that upset, it's a very simple thing to do, brother. Go somewhere else. I appreciate that you take your time to watch my story to give me the thumbs down. Thank you, brother, for every thumbs down you have ever given me. Because it shows that I have your undivided attention and that you watch me. And I appreciate that. Just like I told the homeless man at the park. I appreciate everybody who watches me. I letting you all know these stories are 100% true. Steve Fishman represented me after Demetrius got killed. And I used to always say something about Demetrius to Steve Fishman. He said... You knew Demetrius, and I know he would wonder, did I really know Demetrius? I know he would, because I would always talk about Demetrius to fish. I said, Steve, if it wasn't for Demetrius Holloway, I wouldn't even use you as a lawyer. And that's the honest to God truth. Demetrius talking about that man winning every case he ever had. So imagine, soon as I go catch a case, who you think I'm going to go get? My man been singing his praises all the time. All the time he was singing Steve Fishman's praise. Understand that. So when I caught a case, the first person I went to get was Steve Fishman because I wanted to be a winner on these cases like Demetrius was. And I found out Steve Fishman is the real deal. He is all of that and a bag of chips. He has never lost a case for me. He has never lost a case for Demetrius. That is a hell of a record. And I take my hat off to brother Steve Fishman because he's an honorable lawyer. He does not rip people off like I have seen a lot of lawyers like Ed Bell do. Steve Fishman was a very honorable man and very respectful. Understand that. If you got him to represent you, you was a lucky man. If you got him to represent you, you were a lucky man. And that's the honest to God truth. So I'm just sitting here and I want to let all of you know, I never met Steve Fishman until Demetrius got killed. And when he did, the first time I met Steve Fishman, I was talking about Demetrius Holloway asking for yourself. I always sang Demetrius Holloway praise just like Demetrius sung his praise. So if Demetrius was praising him and I'm praising Demetrius, quite naturally, 
I would wind up with Steve Fishman, wind up with Steve Fishman if I could afford him. So I just want y'all to know a little about timeline when these niggas keep hollering a timeline. Look it up for yourself. If you don't believe what I got to say, go somewhere else. If you don't believe what I have to say, go somewhere else. You don't have to watch me. It's just like y'all act like this. And let me say this and I'm gone. When we were selling drugs, we wasn't out here begging at schools and somewhere begging people to buy drugs from us. Y'all got that shit backwards. Niggas was flocking looking for us. And half them niggas, we turn away. Wouldn't even serve me. Go ahead on. So this misconception that you all seem to have about drug dealers, like they're just walking around, and hey, would you buy this one? Those are idiots. If you walk around a mall and a motherfucker walk up to you trying to sell you some drugs and don't know you, he's an idiot. Because he, you could be the police. He don't know who the hell you are. This is why I told you I never served the Snyder. I ain't never, you can look at my run, I ain't never served a police officer in my life. Because if you're a police, I do not know you. Understand that. How can you serve a police? Do you know him? Did you really, you, you thought you knew him? Well, that's what you did. You thought you knew him. Because he was a police officer. I'm going to leave y'all on this last story and I'm going to go. It was a building in Highland Park on Florence selling crack. They was getting money and we was getting money on Geneva in our apartment building. There was another apartment building that was down by Liberty Catter Corner and they was selling crack. And this guy was at the door selling crack. Everybody who walked in the door, he trying to sell crack to. I mean, if a person family walk in there who wasn't crack and they going to visit their family, he trying to sell them crack. Let me explain to you what happened to him. He in there trying to sell everybody in the building crack who walk in. I'm going to tell y'all who walked in. Quaker. A Highland Park police. Quaker, Francisco, Ponytail, Axel Foley, and Callaway. Quaker walked in. Understand, I'm going to explain to y'all what Quaker looked like. He looked like a bodybuilder, nothing like a crackhead. Quaker looked like he was in top physical shape, big as a goddamn bodybuilder. Now he think he smoking crack. So when he asked Quaker, the Highland Park police officer, how many rocks did he want? Quaker said like this. Boom! I want all. Oh and took his ass to jail in all the crack after Quaker knocked his ass out cold. That's what Quaker did for him. That's what selling to anybody that you don't know will do to you. This man walked in looking like a bodybuilder and he's trying to sell him crack, not realizing he's the police and asked Quaker, how many rocks did he want? Quaker looked at that motherfucker, turned, and knocked his ass out and said, I want them all. And that's a real true story. Ask Brother Quaker if it ain't true, a former Highland Park police officer that I knew. Subscribe, share, and like. And let me clear that up. I knew who he was, and he knew who I was. I guarantee you that. And here's the last time I ever saw Brother Quaker. I was riding a brand new black Trans Am, brand new. And I was riding through Highland Park and Quaker was riding a patrol car. Quaker pulled me over and I knew it was him. And I didn't have no drugs on me. I didn't try to run him. As soon as he put the lights on me, I pulled right over, rolled the window down, he pulled up. What's happening, Quaker? Quaker looked at me, what's up? And he didn't even search the car because he knew when I was dirty, I took off on the ass. When I pulled over and stopped, he pulled over, stopped, pulled up, any this, that, seeing I wasn't trying to flee or nothing. He didn't even take my license. He didn't search the car. 
He didn't do anything but sell caddy. Come on. And that's the last time I ever saw a Quaker in Highland Park. He was by himself. He was in uniform. And he was driving a Highland Park squad, a Highland Park police squad car. That's the last time I ever seen Quaker. So subscribe, share, and like. And these stories I tell you are true. They used to chase me and my sister out of Highland Park all the time. Who wants to dispute that? Ask Quaker about that since you want to run and tell, let him dispute everything I say. Ask Brother Quaker that and see what he tell you if you know him. And one more thing about Brother Quaker. He was talking one day and he said to me, Eddie, you think you hot shit, don't you? I know women who deliver and sell drugs. This is what Quaker said to me and it's the honest to God truth. He said, Eddie, you think you hot shit? I know women that sell drugs. I'm looking at him. You think you hot shit? I know women. I'm handling at this time a hundred to a thousand keys a month. In this day, I would like to ask Quaker, since we were just having a gentleman's conversation, do you think they could fuck with me now, Quaker? Do you think they can fuck with me and Demetrius and Eddie Jackson, the fat man? Put them out there against us. Tell who them women was and put their ruckus up against ours and see if they match up, Quaker. Since you thought that them bitches can fuck with us, bring them on, baby. Check out their stories and check out our stories, Mr. Quaker Highland Park, ex-police officer. You told me you thought them bitches was better than me. I don't think so, brother. I don't think so. I think nowhere near could they fuck with us. Eddie Jackson, Demetrius Holloway, Richard Wakefield, and the rest of us. Courtney Brown Sr. coming out of Pakistan, brother. I closed crack houses down. I was selling so much heroin. They got jealous, brother. Understand that. Any motherfucker, and let me give you a little lesson, Quaker. Any motherfucker selling cocaine that was selling against us when we was getting the heroin did not stand a chance. But I know you're a police officer. So let me give you a little knowledge. Cocaine does not compare to heroin. And let alone getting it from Doc Gambino, brother. Subscribe, share, and like. I think you was a little wrong. So I thought I'd correct you today and tell you to your face. Them bitches couldn't fuck with us. They might have been hustling, getting money, and I ain't got no dispute about that. As I told you all, it's way more motherfuckers out here getting money than you think. Some of them keep it undercover. Understand that. I don't think they could fuck with us, though. Not in the city of Detroit. Maybe in New York or somewhere. I can't say. I don't even want to say. I'm saying what we did in Detroit. The people I know from Detroit wasn't even close to us. The women was trying to get with us. Probably had our bag, Mr. Quaker. That woman you talking about probably was getting her bag from Demetrius Holloway. Subscribe, share, and like. And this is real true street crime. Eddie Jackson Jr. telling it all for you. Subscribe, share, and like. This is real true street crime. Red dot, red shoes. Brittany Simmons, fine young attorney, scorching them out there. Setting them on fire. Wheels, deed, divorces, anything corporate. Simmons Law. Check her out, and she will definitely help you out. One honorable lawyer. Don't take your money and tell the judge. Do whatever the fuck you want to do with it. Understand that. Jelani's Tasting Table. World-class chef. Straight out of Baker's College. Baker's College. Baker's College. Culinary College Finest. Jelani's Tasting Table. 420 style or regular style. Have it your way, baby. Top tier cuts, 313, Super Ken for the weekend. Top tier cuts, 313, Super Ken for the weekend. Class and Matt Calf, loud delivery. The loud brothers, awful loud with that skunk straight out of Highland Park, Michigan. Or perhaps just them 420 style gummy bears. Coney Island Chronicle. 
It's Coney Island Tony. Check him out for yourself. Coney Island Chronicles, Facebook, Instagram, all over the place. Big Boss Film, Courtney Brown Jr., just for you on YouTube and Spotify. Check Brother Brown out over there on Motown Podcast this morning if you want to hear the Carl Ed Martin story told by Carl Martin. Let me go on podcast today right around 10 o'clock. So check out Motown Mafia Podcast if you want to hear Carl Martin tell his father's story, which is a wonderful star-studded story. So as I say to you all, subscribe, share, and like, and voila, when the real true street crime will do. And as I say to all of y'all out there, motivate, don't hate, motivate, don't hate. It is a shame to hate and not motivate. Understand that. And before I go, I read something by Nipsey Hussle today. And I thought it was a wonderful thing that the brother wrote. If your circle, check it out for yourself. Understand this. Nipsey Hussle said, if your circle does not inspire you, you need a new circle, brother. If all you can do is sit around and hate and give thumbs down to wonderful stories that I know of and everybody else giving thumbs up, brother, you need a new crew because obviously you're hanging around a bunch of haters. So if you're hanging around a gang of haters, as Nipsey Hussle said, you need to enlarge your crew, brother, because that hating, it ain't where it's at. Understand that. Subscribe, share, and like. I am Eddie Jackson Jr. And I will tell you all, go over there and check out on Instagram what my brother Nipsey Hussle said, because it was wonderful. If you ain't inspired to do better, you around the wrong people. Eddie Jackson was a motivator. He motivated everybody to do better. And that's exactly what Nipsey Hussle wrote and talked about. And I found it very interesting. And all of you who want to see exactly what Nipsey Hussle wrote, look at Instagram today. I thought it was beautiful. And it said exactly how I feel. Motivate, don't hate. Motivate, don't hate. And if it helped you, brother, meditate, don't hate. Subscribe, share, and like. And I am Manny Jackson Jr. telling you about. Go over there and check Crime Town out on Spotify, King Pins Kids, and listen to that rhyme give valley for yourself so you don't have to hate so much. Understand that. And if you hate so much, and as I just said to y'all, go to a channel, man, you like them niggas so you don't have to hate. Understand that. Subscribe, share, and like I am, Eddie Jackson Jr. And the only place you're going to get this is right here on YouTube, Red Dot Red Shoes. Motivate, don't hate, and in the words of Eddie Jackson, the fat man, I'm going to be seeing a lot of you all motivate, don't hate, subscribe, share, and like, and thank you to you all, thank you to all of you, you humble me incredibly, thank you, subscribe, share, and like, I'm out, let me explain something to y'all, if you all got 40 years to give me, I got 40 years of worth of stories to give you. I've been in the game, as I told you all, since I was about 12 or 13 years old. I have 40 years of stories to give you all. They will not run out. And as Puff Daddy said, I thought I told y'all we wouldn't stop. I thought I told y'all we would not stop. In the words of Puff Daddy, I thought I told y'all we wouldn't stop. Subscribe, share, and like. And let me rephrase that. In the words of Brother Love, in the words of Brother Love, I thought I told y'all we wouldn't stop. Subscribe, share, and like. And this is Real True Street Crime, baby. Red dot, red shoe. <laughs> red dot, red shoes. Thank you all.
subscribe, share, and like. Thank you all. You humble me truly. I appreciate every one of you. Even the thumbs down. Brother, keep watching. Give me 10 thumbs down today. I appreciate them. Subscribe, share, and like, and I'm out.